to go? All right. <laughs> so, uh, good evening, folks. Uh, we're going to start uh, our meeting shortly. But what we're going to do is we're going to ask uh, some representatives uh, to come down with their, uh, their lovely young ones. And we uh, have a proclamation here that marks uh, World Breastfeeding Week from October 1st to 7th. So we'll ask the moms and the little folks to come on down. You guys want to get a picture? Come on over. Come on over, come on over. Good. All right, here we go. All right, so um, making this proclamation, it's World Breastfeeding Week from October 1st to the 7th. Whereas breastfeeding is recommended for optimal nutrition and healthy growth and development in early months and years of life and is fundamental to the well-being and prosperity of communities. And whereas breastfeeding has an impact on lifelong health with exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months and continued breastfeeding for two years and beyond, ensuring that mothers and children receive maximum health benefits. And whereas breastfeeding is one of the most cost-efficient preventative strategies for many infections and chronic acute diseases, and whereas infant feeding is one of the most important decisions that a new family makes. And whereas parents need the support of families, friends, regional health authorities, peer-to-peer -peer support groups, municipalities, community groups and organizations, businesses and employers. And whereas World Breastfeeding Week provides an opportunity for people to celebrate and raise public awareness about the importance of breastfeeding and the role everyone can play in normalizing breastfeeding. And whereas the theme of World Breastfeeding Week 2022 is Newfoundland and Labrador, is Step Up for Breastfeeding, Educate and Support. It focuses on raising awareness of the values of breastfeeding and uh, elevate it to the level of public health obligation by encouraging organizations and countries to develop measures to safeguard breastfeeding. Therefore, I, George Andrews, Mayor of Happy Valley Goose Bay, proclaim October 1st to 7th, 2022, World Breastfeeding Week, in Newfoundland and Labrador, and in the municipality of Happy Valley Goose Bay. And I'll sign it. Here you go. Hi. <laughs> you to do that? You want to take this? Huh? Yeah. There we go. All right. And what's your name? What's your sister? Is that your sister? What's your sister's name? Brittany. Oh, Brittany. Who's this? You know this lady? Yeah, Lily. Oh, cool. Uh, Simple. Oh. <laughs> and what's your name? Thea. Thea. Well, welcome to Council Chambers, and thanks for coming. So we can sign this. Thank you so much. All right. Do you want to get a council picture? Yeah. You picture a council? Do you want to get a picture with everybody? No, council wants? Uh, you guys want to come in for a quick picture? Okay. You guys want to come in? Yep. Tell you what. Hey, do you want to sit there? Mm -hmm. Are you <laughs> There you go. And you can hold that in your hand. There we go. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> we're going to start a meeting very shortly here, folks, as soon as our, our friends uh, make their way. All right, good evening and uh, welcome to the... Uh, to our council meeting this evening, and I don't see what meeting it is. 
23rd, 23rd council meeting, here we go, of the 13th elected town council of the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. So we're going to start our meeting this evening, and I guess uh, I'll ask for a motion to adopt our agenda. So moved by Councillor Brumfield, seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Uh, are there any additions or discussion about the agenda? Okay, all those in favour, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? All right, we've accepted the agenda. Uh, we have a second proclamation here for the, for the uh, we can do that now or we do it on the 30th? It's up to you guys. Okay, I was going to, do we want to wait this proclamation for, the wait till the 30th? Yeah, we'll do that at the oh. event, so that's why, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so delegations, this evening uh, we have uh, two scheduled. Uh, I see one gentleman here. So I'm going to ask you, sir, if you'd be so kind as to come to the, uh, the microphone and state your name for our records uh, for the uh, minutes and uh, introduce yourself. And I understand there's some very exciting uh, information you're gonna share with us from a community perspective. So welcome to Council Chambers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is uh, Toby uh, Bald. I, uh, been a resident of Happy Valley Goose Bay for almost 22 years, so I guess I'm, I moved here. Uh, I, I used to work in the Correctional Center here. I retired from there in 2010, decided to stay in Happy Valley Goose Bay, Mr. Mayor. And we're glad you did, sir. <laughs> Thank so you. So the floor is all yours. So you have roughly 10 minutes or so. Okay, uh, um, I'm going to, and uh, thanks again. I would like to say, Mr. Mayor, thank you and, and to your council for giving me this opportunity to make this presentation tonight. I didn't know if I was going to see that up there or not, <laughs> but anyway, it looks like it's okay. Okay, <clears throat> uh, yeah, let's go to the first slide there. Okay, as you all know, on February the 24, 2022, Russia declared war on the Ukraine. Uh, I am a member of the Pentecostal Church here in Happy Valley Goose Bay and uh, I presently hold the position of treasurer. And uh, it, it, we had a board meeting on April the 10th after seeing all the images that we've been seeing coming out about people's houses and people, of course, uh, millions of people getting displaced from their homes and everything. And so obviously, uh, like it did with everybody, it struck a chord in our hearts. So we decided that we would have a meeting at a board meeting on April the 10th, 2022. It was a unanimous decision that we would try our best to do something for the Ukraine. Uh, what, what form that would take, of course, we didn't know at the time, but we were looking at three possibilities. One, make a donation to some organization or sponsoring a family from the Ukraine who, would, who now lives in Poland or elsewhere, or maybe the possibility of bringing a family from the Ukraine to Goose Bay. So uh, I was chosen uh, to actually to basically research this and uh, to see what actually we could do and, and to report back to the board. So after speaking with several people involved with the Ukraine, I was put in contact with a lady by the name of Sitsana uh, Ditsanovich, uh, a Ukrainian lady in Barrie, Ontario. And this lady is, is very heavily involved in helping Ukrainians come to Canada. So on May the 16, 2022, I uh, went to Barrie, Ontario, and I had a meeting with Susanna at uh, Barrie, Ontario, yes. And this is uh, Susanna right there, and it's me. This was a meeting we had uh, like I said, in uh, Barry Hunter. Okay, let's go to the next slide. After that meeting, Susanna shared with me how she was so overwhelmed with the, excuse me. <laughs> she was so overwhelmed uh, with the great need of the number of people who had been displaced by this war. She said, I don't know what to do. The people just keep coming and coming and coming. The need is so great to try to get these families a place to live and food to eat. She shared with me that she took one family, and that's not written down there, but she shared with me she took one family uh, to, uh, down to the office for to sign up uh, for their social insurance number and stuff. And she said when she got down to Service Canada, the, the halls were filled with Ukrainian people. And she said, uh, unless the government steps in very soon, 
uh, because they're all going there expecting they're going to get a housing. And she said, it, there isn't any available anymore. And she said, unless the government steps in and does something, then uh, we'll have Ukrainians on the street very soon. So, of course, after that meeting, I took all this back to the board and it was, uh, we made a decision that we would make a donation in the amount of $10,000. I know that's not very much. It's only a drop in the bucket compared to the need. Uh, so we, we uh, sent it so that she could use it for to help some families that specifically need right now in, in that's coming to Canada. So after that, then on August the 9th, I received an email from Zitsana telling me about a family in Poland with five children who wants to come to Canada. And after looking at all the provinces, they wanted to come to Newfoundland and Labrador. So I made contact with the gentleman, his name is Vaskel Panaski. After, and, and after many emails, Vaskel and his son will arrive here in Goose Bay on the 13th of October. And when he gets settled, he will bring over his wife and his other two children. The other, he has two other children besides, but they're still in the Ukraine because they're in their 20s right now. Next slide, please. So presenting the Vaskel Panaski family. So you have Vaskel, uh, the father is 45. You have uh, Irina, uh, the mother is 40. Uh, Uria, Yuri is 18, which is the son. Uh, somehow that got kind of mixed up there. It's not supposed to be in that kind of an order. Anastasia, his daughter is 12. And Lumilia is 10. This is uh, Vaskel and Irina, and this is his family. The two, uh, the boy and, and the girl in the middle at the back is the two that's still in the Ukraine. Like I said, they're in their 20s, and uh, they will not be coming. But the, the boy over on the right is the one that's going coming, and then he's bringing his wife and his other two children after that. So due to now this being such a large project, it was decided to share it with the Ministerial of Goose Bay and to see their thoughts on the project. It was unanimously accepted and it was decided to make it a community project. So all churches in the area have come on board. Plans will be put in place for a welcoming party. I am asking the whole community, let's get involved and show these people a good hearty Labrador welcome. One of our urgent needs is to find a home for this family to live in. As a temporary solution, Vasquez and his son will stay in my basement apartment until a suitable home can be found. And of course, that will be free. I'm not charging them any rent or anything. But hopefully, uh, because I'm quite sure Christmas is just around the corner and he's going to want to get his wife and his children over as soon as possible. So plans are in place to have a grocery shower for this family. If you wish to donate, please contact your local church. So what can I do to help? Well, I'm glad you asked. If, if you wish to donate to this family, you can put it in an envelope and mark it Ukraine family and give it to your local church. Or you could send it directly to the ministerial, it's up to you. All money received will go to the ministerial. A committee will be struck to decide how the funds will be distributed as the need arise. Any extra funds left over after the family is settled will be used to maybe uh, help other families in the Ukrainian conflict, or who knows, maybe bring another family here to Goose Bay. So our present needs, number one, is a house. We have to find a house that's suitable for a family of five. Uh, the second one, uh, I don't know if somebody would be interested in donating a vehicle or loaning this person a vehicle because he's definitely going to need a vehicle until he gets straightened away, uh, you know, and he gets settled enough to buy one on his own. Uh, we would love to have someone who can speak Ukrainian uh, to help fill out government papers. And eventually, uh, I think as I will be... Uh, the head of the committee that struck uh, uh, one of the things that we're possibly going to be looking at is getting tickets for to bring the rest of his family over. So that's the presentation. Thank you very much. If there's any questions or... 
Um, first of all, I'd like to, uh, to say thank you. And uh, in speaking with uh, Pastor Noble, uh, uh, my understanding is that you're spearheading this project and uh, the other, uh, your church groups, uh, your church group and the other ministerial association have kind of come on board. Yes. So uh, it's amazing. Thank you from a community perspective. Um, our community is an excellent place to raise a family, as, as so. you know. And uh, from that regard, uh, uh, I think welcoming arms in terms of helping someone from the Ukraine, especially uh, during this difficult, difficult time. I'm not sure if anybody wants to say anything. I don't. But if there's anything we can do, please share the information with uh, with Greg or with, uh, yes. I guess he's been talking to you, Kelsey, has he? Yes. Either, either one. And uh, we can uh, share our, our it on our Facebook page or on our, uh, on our social media, if with be. But again, I'd urge anybody who's interested in helping reach out to your church or reach out to, uh, to Mr. Bald uh, directly. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you, you yeah. very much. We look forward to meeting uh, Basil when he, uh, when he comes with his yes, family. I, I, Absolutely. I think, Mr. Mayor, if, if you've got the time, probably sometime when you do actually arrive, you'll have a, not probably at the airport, but I'm thinking probably the day after, because they're going to be flying all night. <laughs> because uh, he leaves over here on the 12th and he don't get here to the, he, I think it's around 10 o'clock at night, so I wouldn't say he's in the... <laughs> He'd be too interested to see any, uh, but i tell you what, reach out, um, we'll make, I'll make the time and I'm sure other councillors will be uh, more than happy to do it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we did have a second delegation, but I don't see that second delegation. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll move into the meeting. All right. Um, adoption of the previous minutes. So you had the meeting, the minutes, uh, only one extra meeting, which is our past meeting this time. Uh, meeting uh, minutes are in front of you for the 22nd uh, council meeting. Um, okay, yeah, okay. Before we uh, get into that, I just uh, mentioned the reason that we're all dressed in uh, orange this evening. Of course, we know Friday is a holiday and it is the uh, September 30th uh, day of uh, truth and reconciliation. So uh, as we won't, uh, we won't be meeting uh, from a council perspective on that date, we just thought it would be fitting, and uh, thanks to staff for arranging, but we thought it would be fitting to, uh, to show our support for that day. We also uh, will have a, a very short event at the town hall here where we'll be um, reading a proclamation and we'll be raising uh, the Truth and Reconciliation flag. And it starts at 1.30, uh, 1 1.30, yep. Uh, there is a PSA on our Facebook page. We encourage anybody to uh, to drop by, but most of all uh, to uh, to take that day and um, uh, use it uh, in your your own personal manner, however you uh, you choose to uh, to recognize the importance of that day and uh, struggles that uh, people have uh, have gone on in the past. All right, thank you, uh, Councillor Winters. All right, so the minutes uh, for our 22nd meeting are there in front of you. Um, may I get a motion to adopt the minutes as they're presented? Mm -hmm. All right, moved by. Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by. Well, I guess I should have asked for any errors or omissions, but I will do that in discussion. Any errors or omissions that anybody sees? All right, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor of adopting the minutes as presented, indicate with aye. 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 All right, contrary minded. We passed. Correspondence, I don't see any in my package. Yeah. Is there? I don't see. There's two. two. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Oh, update. Okay, I'm looking at the online one here. I'm sorry. Okay, nope. Someone's going to have to help me out because it's not on my agenda. Can, did you want yep. me just to summarize? Yep, sure, go ahead. Okay, um, we had two items of correspondence. We received. Councillor Rumbokin. Yep, we received a letter from the seniors advocate um, with a request for our a meeting and just the brief summary on that is that um, that's from Susan Walsh and she is the seniors advocate for Newfoundland and Labrador and uh, part of her mandate is to meet with the municipalities so she's requested a meeting with the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. The second piece of correspondence is from the Municipal Assessment Agency, which is just providing us with an update on the Municipal Assessment Agency. Um, they recently had a board meeting in August, and so they just wanted to, there's some bullet points on um, what changes have been made and their next meeting being scheduled in November. Okay, 
All right, thank you. And uh, we have been in contact, I think, with uh, the uh, Office uh, of the Seniors Advocate, and we're assisting, or we provided some space recommendations for them to uh, conduct a, a session in town, and we'll participate in, uh, in that as well. Um, all right, moving forward. We'll go into committee meetings, and tonight we'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace's committee, Community Planning and Development. Sure thing. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. The Community Planning and Development Committee met on Wednesday, September 14th, 2022 at 3 p.m. In attendance was Councillor Hayward Broomfield, Councillor Pamela Duffett, Mayor George Andrews as ex officio, CAO Nadine McCauley, Engineer Randy Dillon, Engineer Tech Mark Urquhart, EA Kathy Eddy, and myself, Deputy Mayor Ella Wallace. Meeting was called to order at 3.32 p.m. The previous agenda was accepted with no errors or omissions. There were no delegates registered to present. Recruitment still ongoing for the position of the municipal tech. Um, and a monthly uh, permit report was presented by engineering tech Mark Urquhart. The CAO advised that work is ongoing as to how to incorporate this report into the town's website. We discussed new crown land applications, deferred crown land applications, and discretionary land use applications from the agenda. These recommendations are to follow. There being no further business, the, committee, uh, the Community Planning and Development Committee meeting was adjourned at 4.20 p.m. And the next meeting will be held on Tuesday, October 18th, 2022 at 3 p.m. Please right. accept this as the CPD committee report as having been read. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, look, so it's been moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace that uh, we accept the Community Planning and Development Committee uh, report as presented. Seconded by? Seconded by uh, Councillor Duffett. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the report as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay, passed. All right, recommendations. From First recommendation, um, 159956 Finley's Farm. The CPD committee recommends that council have no objection to the Crown Land application 159956 on the condition that future development complies with the town's development regulations. All right, it's moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace that uh, we recommend a no objection letter to Crown Lands for application 159956. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Uh, recommendation passed. Next one, please. Thank you. 160128, Augustus Best. The CPD committee recommends that council have no objection to the Crown Land application 160128 with the following conditions. A, compliance with all the town's development regulations, and B, no development structures, um, no development structures are allowed in the easement, but the easement can be used for other backyard activities. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we recommend uh, no objection to Crown Land's application 160128. <coughs> Um, with the noted conditions. Uh, seconded by? Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Recommendations passed. Next recommendation, please. Thank you. 160131, Grand River Snowmobile Club. The CPD committee recommends that council have no objection to the Crown Land application 160131 on the condition that future development complies with the town's development regulations. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we recommend no objection to Crown Land's application 160131 with the noted condition. Uh, seconded by Councillor Duffett. Uh, discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. Uh, Contra minded, recommendation is passed. Next recommendation, please. Thank you. 25 Grenfell Street, Marita's Francisco Skin and Beauty Care Service, a home based business. The CPD committee recommends council approve the application from Marita's uh, Francisco for a home based business located at 25 Grenfell with the following conditions A, a fire life and safety inspection as per NFPA 101 be satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. B, applicant provides an application for business registration or change of use at the applicant's cost. C, compliance with all town's development regulations with special reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. And D, applicant applies or obtains all required approvals from Service NL 
or any government agencies having jurisdiction. It's been moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we uh, approve the application for a home-based business at 25 Grenfell Street uh, from uh, Maritas Francisco Skin and Beauty Care Service uh, with the regular uh, conditions seconded by seconded by Councillor Bennett discussion all those in favor indicate with aye aye, aye. 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 contrary minded the next recommendation please thank you the next one is 31 Montagnes Road bouncing bean entertainment it's home based business application the CPD committee recommends council approve the application from Jade Pilgrim and Vivek Malhotra for a home-based business located at 31 Montagnes Road with the following conditions. A, a fire and life safety inspection as per an FP uh, A 101 be satisfactorily completed, uh, the applicant's cost. B, applicant provides an application for a business registration change of use at the applicant's cost. C, compliance with all the town's development regulations with special reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. And D, an applicant obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies having jurisdiction. All right, it's been uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we uh, approve an application for a home-based business at 31 Montagnus and Bouncing Bean Entertainment with the noted conditions, which are regular conditions placed on this type of business. Uh, seconded by Councillor Broomfield. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Recommendation is passed. Next, rec next recommendation, please. Thank you. Last application is 45 Lake Crescent, McLean's Jerky. It's a home-based business. The CPD committee recommends council approve the application from Jeremy McLean for a home-based business located at 445 Lake Crescent with the following conditions. A, a fire and life safety inspection as per the NFPA 101 be satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. B, applicant provides an application for a business registration change of use at the applicant's cost. C, compliance with all the town's development regulations with special reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. And D, applicant obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies having jurisdiction. All right, moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we uh, approve an application for a home-based business located at 45 Lake Crescent and it's McLean's Jerky and with the uh, regular conditions for a home-based business, seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion? Uh, all those in favor indicate with aye. Aye. Contra minded. Uh, mode recommendation is passed. That's the end of recommendations That's from the CPD. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's move along to community services and recreation and the floor to uh, Councillor uh, Winters. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, our meeting was held on September 12th, 2022. Our meeting was called to order at 4.34 p.m. Present were myself, Councillor Winters, as chair, Deputy Mayor Wallace, Councillor Duffett, CAO Nadine McCauley, CSR Director Travis Ford, Community Development Manager Greg Osmond, and the Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy. Uh, regrets were from ex officio Mayor Andrews. There was a review of previous minutes and action items with no errors and, and or omissions. Uh, discussions that took place were the CSR's involvement in the Trap Line Marathon, uh, the Happy Valley Day planning uh, discussion, uh, Red Shoe Walk uh, planned for next week, uh, the HMCS Goose Bay visit planning, um, the annual Pumpkin Walk, and the 2023rd or 2023 50th anniversary of the Town of Hatton Valley Goose Bay Planning Committee update, and also discussion regarding a dance floor construction at Kinsman Park. Uh, there are no recommendations, and uh, the manager's report was presented by CSR Director Travis Ford. Uh, our next meeting is October 5th at 4.30 p.m. and our meeting adjourned at 6.23. All right, it's moved by Councillor Winters that we accept the uh, Community Services and Recreation Committee uh, report as presented. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion. I would just like to uh, make note uh, that the HMCS Goose Bay was a, uh, um, I guess, a a little bit different in terms of uh, the way it was, and it was uh, because of the passing of Her Majesty. 
but uh, everybody uh, did a wonderful job, and we'll we'll get to that, I guess, later in counselors' form. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor of accepting the report as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contraminded. All right. Motion I recommend the report is passed. And you have no recommendations from your committee. No. Okay. All right. Moving through the agenda, finance, admin, uh, and policy, and Councillor uh, Broomfield. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. The Finance Administration Policy held their meeting on Tuesday, September the 20th. It was called to order at 4.30 p.m. In attendance was Councillor Darrell Bennett, Mayor George Andrews, ex officio, DFO Nadine McCauley, HR Kellyanne Jack, and DFO Mike Dalmont, and SAT Kelsey Campagna, Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy and myself as the Chair, Councillor Hayward Broomfield. Regrets were from Councillor Rumble. We reviewed the previous minutes. No errors or omissions were noted. So we discussed some items that were left over from the previous one dealing with Glen Corporation. And that one there, the administration are still working on the land development issue on that one. The other one had to do with two amalgamations of property, commercial property that is, by Lori Hillier. One was approved by the Municipal Assessment Agency, the other one was denied, and there's re uh, recommendations coming on those two. And we also de uh, denied a travel assistance request from two individuals from the previous. So the new business that came up at this meeting, we had a request from the SPCA for a property and business tax exemption, which is recommendations attached. We had a request to write off a home-based business because the owner and operator had sold the property in 2019. We denied a youth travel assistance request. And the information item for the council is already the transit system and elect for the electric bus, which is going to be deferred really until the budget, but it's just put out there for the let councilors know that's coming up. Amendment policy F 0005 was amended by adding decks and ramps to the fence category, and there's a recommendation coming for that one. We had a request from the arena, well, really, it's the recycling people from the operating out of the arena on the Canadian side. No, actually, this one's arena from HLC consistency for the budget item, which will be discussed budget item. We have a hiring policy recommendation coming up. We also have a recommendation for council to purchase 10 tickets to the RCMP ball. And we have a request from the Happy Valley Goose Bay Recyclers to pay the insurance premiums on the liability insurance operating of the Canadian side of the arena. Recommendations are attached for this one. And council has also requested, they had a request from the RCMP for a $500 donation for bicycle registration and anti-theft initiative, which is a little bit different than their uh, engraving one they had on before. The other business to discuss is that all councillors are required to read the new Municipal Conduct Act and Municipal Conduct Regulations that was re recently provided to us by our CAO. We had a verbal update on the ad from our CAO and we also had manager's reports attached, department reports. Uh, one was for the YMCA claim, another one was for the uh, overtime. And then we had uh, SAT donations report, low income report, and the age receivables. This meeting was adjourned at 6.30, and the date of the next meeting was set for Monday, October 17th at 4.30 p.m. And that's it for this one. Thank you. Great. Thank you, uh, Councillor Broomfield. That's moved by Councillor Broomfield that we accept the finance and minimum policy committee report as presented. Seconded by <laughs> Councillor uh, Winters. Discussion? All right, none being heard. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Uh, report is uh, accepted. All right, you have some recommendations, sir? Uh, yes, I do. is still yours. Okay, the first one. The amalgamation uh, with Municipal Assessment Agency Lloyd Hillier Properties. The FAP Committee recommends Council <laughs> deny the amalgamation of Par ID 079971 
and Power ID 079972, based on instruction and direction from the Municipal Assessment Agency and their inability to approve the amalgamation based on the different assessment approaches with commercial property. Power ID 079971 will be taxed on its assessed value and Power ID 079972 will be taxed a vacant land tax. Management recommends all previous amounts stand for Power ID 079971 and Power ID 079972. The okay, SAP I think, I think that uh, continuing, these are two separate recommendations, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, okay. so I think there should have been a bullet here. Yeah. All right, so uh, it's been moved by um, Councillor uh, Brumfield that uh, counts and the uh, Finance and Amend Policy Committee the council denied the amalgamation of uh, ID uh, properties ID 079971 and 079972 based on instruction and direction from Municipal Assessment Agency. Seconded by. Seconded. Are you seconding the motion? Uh, nobody else will. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's moved uh, by uh, Councillor Brumfield, seconded by uh, Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Okay, all good. All those in favor of <laughs> denying, indicate with aye. 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 Contra-minded, uh, recommendation is denied. Okay, the second part of that, no? Okay, the second part. The FAP committee recommends council approve Power ID 080446 and Power ID 080447 to be amalgamated as of 2020 2021 and 2022 will be taxed at one amalgamated assessed value. All right, so it's moved by uh, Councillor Brumfield and the committee uh, that we approve um, the amalgamation uh, as of 2020 of parcels of land 08, as a cross, sorry, 080446 and 080447. Seconded by okay. Councillor Bennett. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra-minded? The recommendation is accepted. Next one, sir. Okay, youth travel application, Big Land Barbell, Aaron Porter and Hannah Rose. The FAP committee recommends council deny the, deny the applications as the youth travel policy is under review. All right, so it's moved by the committee and Councillor Brumfield that we deny the requests as noted. Uh, as the travel policy is under review. Seconded by? Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Wallace. Okay. Um, just the question as to why it's still being under review since March. Well, we really have not had a whole lot of time Councillor to discuss Rumpen. a whole lot of this kind of stuff, to be honest with you. We've been swamped with uh, dealing with our homelessness slash restlessness. Some are coming on and now there will be a new chair coming up on this committee, so hopefully they'll move forward on that one. Um, so is there money left in this policy? Uh, there is roughly, as of the last one, about 10000 Okay, believe. so that's, there, uh, to, to the best of my knowledge, that can be corrected by the CAO. This is not specifically for this policy. It's a donation, overall donation, town donation policy. Am I correct on that? Correct. Yeah. So it's not, there's not per se money left in that. That's our entire donation policy comes from that. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of denying, uh, indicate with aye. 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 Contra-minded? Motion is passed. No, I didn't. Motion? Pardon me? I didn't accept. You didn't accept? Did you indicate? I don't want to deny it. You don't want to deny it? No. So then you have to, you have to you indicate. Have yeah, you can't abstain from voting. Right. So shall I call for the vote again? Okay, all those in favor of denying this application as is presented, indicate with aye. 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 And against? Okay. Uh, so we have a majority uh, for deny, so the uh, recommendation is, uh, is to deny is accepted. All right, next recommendation, sir. Okay, the next one, business tax and property tax exemption request. Uh, power ID 260300 and 260, 
300-001. The FAP Committee recommends that Council approve granting an exemption of property and business tax to the SPCA for 2022 in the amount of $4,237. Okay, it's been moved uh, by Council Broomfield and the Committee that we approve an exemption of business and property tax to the SPCA for 2022 in the noted amount. Uh, seconded by Councillor Winters. Any discussion? Uh, Councillor Duffett. Um, have they been approved for both of these in previous years? Well, they yeah. only started being taxed in 2022, but I believe they were. Yeah. Okay. And can you possibly shed some light on that? We had. Um, three mm -hmm. in the previous month asking for the same request but mm -hmm. they 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 weren't taxed previously that was their first year also but the SPCA was taxed mm -hmm. for their business this isn't the first year so I'll the, ask the three that were mentioned before um, it was that this business tax was something new for them That's yeah right. but, Correct. but so it's I, not for the I, SPCA it's, so it's been yeah let's just direct through the chair let's not get back into back and forth all right, so can we get confirmation on that? What, what is the specific question? I, I, if the other three groups had approached for the exemption um, with the reasoning that this was the first year that they had gotten this, the business tax, it was kind of a surprise. It wasn't budgeted for. Um, and the, But the SPCA was, they were charged business tax, or is this their first year as well that they're looking for an they, exemption for that? This is not their first year looking for it, but they have not been charged business tax before. Okay. Answer your question? Um, somewhat. Okay. <laughs> it it, it is sure? a little confusing. You almost had to kind of be there. Before <coughs> the okay. Um, and so previously, the I can't remember if it was last month or the month before, it was approved to deny their exemption um, for the other groups mm -hmm. and w can you is there any reasoning why this group is now it's coming oh, yeah. forward as a recommendation to approve well, it? Well we, we had denied one for uh, the hunting and fishing association because they're, they're an organization that has a membership and they can uh, up their membership fees and recruit their costs. The SBCA does not have any um, memberships to increase their um, revenue, so to speak. They're all dependent 100% on volunteers and donations, whereas the Hunting and Fishing Association has a membership and they charge a fee. That's the difference. So to the best of my knowledge, in some of these previous ones, we have denied the requests in terms of uh, when the request for both business and property. We've denied the business. Bus we've, yeah, we've let, uh, kind of convoluted here, I'm trying to explain. But we have charged property, but allowed the business tax to be exempt. To be yes. exempt. Yes. So that's kind of the model that we have done, in, and I think that's might, might be to some of your one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they came as two separate recommendations, right? Yes. This, is, this is one recommendation together mm -hmm. now yeah. for both. Yeah. It's not across yeah. the board. We were able, Why to, is approve, we were able Why? to approve okay. one so. and deny one previously, but now they're together in one yeah. recommendation. Deputy Mayor? I just agree. I, I'm in agreement with uh, the last, it wasn't last month, it was a month before, and it was for yeah. two. You're right, yeah. There were two separate ones, and it was one for business and one for property, and, and these are combined. Yeah, that's because we're approving both of them. Or yeah. recommending. Yes. The recommendation is so. to approve both, and the last, the other ones recommendation was to approve one and to deny another. Yeah, it's I think the, uh, to, to, just one moment. I think the request came in uh, in the other ones to exempt both, but because in uh, what we did was we, the motion came or the report, the recommendation came <coughs> to approve one and deny the other. That's why there was a separate uh, separate I think, vote. I think the, the issue for me is that it's not just a standard across the board whether you're profit or not for profit. This is the source or it's more the nature of the business as to how you're making a decision on whether you exempt them or not. Correct. It's discretionary. You still have questions. Yeah, so well, I, I, continue I, I, just, your I, don't question. I don't agree with not being
being given the opportunity to vote on them separately was the you, it's two different things they're asking for here is the property and mm. the business and putting it in the one recommendation now we it's, they're yeah. together now so you deny both you accept both whereas before okay. we were given the opportunity and, and that's fair the recommendation from yeah. committee mm -hmm. does put it that way so maybe future going forward we may need to look at the exemptions because the letter comes in at the same letter you, right, we get a letter saying, "Please exempt us from both business and property." But when, yeah, like you're saying, in terms of opportunity of supporting one and not the other, in terms of trying to do what we've done with the other ones, you may support one tax as opposed to the other. But this way, you're looping them both. So this is the recommendation from the committee. Um, the only way I guess around it is if this is defeated and it comes again, we can we can uh, separate them or. But this, this, this is the recommendation committee, so um, we can continue. If there's no further discussion, I'll continue with the vote as it is. And if it's accepted, then we go with that. And if it's defeated, then we can go back to the uh, go back to committee and say, hey, have a look at uh, have a look at this. Any further discussion? So uh, it has been moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. Yep, it's been moved and seconded that we. Um, we approve uh, a business exemption and property tax exemption to the SPCA for 2022 in the noted amount. So all those in favor of approving the exemption indicate with aye. 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 All those in uh, negative? All right, so we've approved that recommendation. All right, uh, next recommendation, sir. Okay, next one is right off of the home-based business uh, ID is DECAD001-274026. Okay, it's uh, been approved that we write off the business tax of uh, $1,500 and the interest of $273 to home-based business DECA001-274026. Uh, moved by the committee and Councillor Broomfield. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? I'm sorry. I read it. He didn't. So I have to go back. I'm sorry. And I've been <laughs> told. All right. That's what having the notes does. All right. So I would ask you to, uh, to read the uh, recommendation fully. Yeah. Okay. The, the FAP committee recommends council approve to write off business tax of $1,500 and interest of $273. And the reason why we're doing this because this, these people, had set, they were set up in 2019 at an address and since then they've sold their property in 2019 and they are, cannot be found anywhere or contacted. Okay, so it has been moved by uh, Councillor Brumfield and the committee that we do uh, approve the write-off of business tax for the noted company at the amount that was noted, $1,500 and $273 in interest. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion. So um, from my perspective, I know we asked, uh, or was noted in the committee that we asked if there's some way that this tax can be attached to the actual sale of any potential property, mm -hmm. if it is the homeowners who have the, uh, the business. So um, hopefully we can get some uh, direction from, uh, from uh, municipal affairs or uh, lawyers or whatever to see if that's possible. So uh, we prevent this kind of stuff from happening. Uh, some home-based businesses are, uh, are owned by um, tenants, in which case, of course, it would be difficult to attach to the homeowner or the property owner, but um, if that is the same, then maybe we can recover this money when the sale of the property. Okay, so all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded. Uh, motion is, our uh, recommendation is passed. Next one, sir. Okay, next one, youth travel application. Big Land Bar Bell, Aaron Porter, the FEP committee recommends council deny the application as youth travel policy is under review. And this is a new uh, travel assistance request too. Yeah. So it has been moved by the committee uh, through Councilor Broomfield that we deny the application uh, by Big, uh, Big Land Bar Bell and Mr. Porter. Um, seconded by. Seconded by Councilor Bennett. Discussion. 
Okay. All those in favor of denying the application indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay, so we have a four to three. So the motion uh, to deny is passed. Okay. All right, uh, you got some more recommendations, sir. Oh, yes. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, policy F00005, page three. Where do decks and ramps fall in terms of pricing? The FAP committee recommends council approve the addition of decks and ramps so the building permit schedule for $25, the same as census. I thought you were going to say $2,500. <laughs> All right, it's been moved through the committee and Councillor Brimfield that uh, the, we make an adjustment to policy F005, as indicated. Uh, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Councillor Rumbold. Um, so just as a point of clarity, um, so this was something that the previous policy just said fences, nothing else. So now it will read fences, decks, and ramps. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I was reading. And, and so we're recommending all citizens now, when you're going to add a ramp or a deck to your home, that you come in the same way you would with a fence. My only question is, if it's a ramp for accessibility, have we considered, and I mean, is it something that we could consider um, waiving the fee if it was a, I, I'm just thinking about the hardship of somebody who had, um, for example, somebody who has a stroke and then needs to have a, a deck, um, sorry, not a deck, a ramp added to their home for accessibility purposes. Would it be something that they'd still have to request an exemption? Oh, an exemption for a permit. Yeah, like is, yeah, is it a, is it something that we could with the permits is it is it a flat everybody needs the permit? I I should know this. But so I, I guess the intent of permits is to ensure that things are done correctly. So to code. It, to okay. not necessarily to code because we don't administer that. What we rely on is that for positioning and things along that lines. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that um, as we do all the time, that if that $25 was an issue, I'm sure I had some discussion with. Yeah, I, with that, that was my only concern. But what, I just didn't want to make yeah. it a barrier for yeah, somebody. Yeah, so, so what we noticed, I think, over the last little while is that, that and the <coughs> conversation came up in committee, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it was uh, that ramps seemed to be coming up over the last little bit, one or two in a row sort of deal. So from that perspective, there was nowhere to fit, so staff looked for direction in terms of where to fit it. And the policy is just being amended to include ramps and that. So, and we're not recommending people come in for it. This policy says you have to have one. Okay. So, if you're going to do any ramps, decks, or what's the other word? Here? Fences. Fences. It, there is a permitting we're advising. fee. Yes, okay. and that's and that's like I say, from our perspective, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's done to a, as per our development regulations. Okay. Yeah. So this helps staff just put it where it needs to be. Thank you for the clarity. All right. So, for any further discussion. All right, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay, we've accepted that recommendation. Next recommendation, sir. Okay, the next one, the RCMP Ball 2022. The FAP committee recommends council approve the request to purchase 10 tickets to the RCMP Ball on November the 5th at a cost of $750. Yep, so it's recommended uh, with the committee through Councilor Brumfield that uh, the FAP recommends that we approve the request to purchase the 10 tickets to the RCMP ball, RCMP ball November 22nd at the cost of $750. Seconded by? Seconded by Councilor Duffy. Discussion. Is this something that's been done previously as well? Yep. Uh, just a quick question: Is this a regular thing that's somewhere in policy, or does it has it? Because my years of council previous to, I've never seen it come that council's approving this. Is it something like a regular thing that we've done in terms of from a budget perspective, or has it come to council every year? It comes from the donations budget, and okay. it's been a regular thing. Okay, since, all right. I don't know, at least yep. the past six sure. years. And we have supported it the last yes. number of number of years. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, seconded on that one? Yes, say. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? OK, 
Okay, recommendations passed. Next recommendation, sir. Okay, the next one is the recycling insurance. The FAP committee recommends council approve the request to pay the Happy Valley Goose Bay recyclers liability insurance for one year. All right, moved by the uh, Finance I mean, Committee uh, through Councillor Broomfield that we uh, council approve the request to pay the uh, recyclers, Happy Valley Goose Bay recyclers liability insurance for the upcoming year. Seconded by Councillor Duffett. Discussion? Just a question. How much? Councillor Winters. Uh, what was the amount? Uh, the amount? So I'm trying to yeah. find that should be in the recommendation. Yeah. A lot of stuff in this. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going hard up down to the I think it was around a thousand dollars a buy. Eight hundred fifty-three dollars and thirty cents. Eight hundred and fifty-three dollars. So could we entertain a friendly motion to uh, to adjust that, uh, Mr. Mover and Seconder? Are you good with that? Okay. So let's add the eight hundred and fifty-three thirty. Yep. Okay. That was correct. Thank you. All right. So it's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Rumbaugh. Just for a point of clarity, so the Happy Valley Goose Bay recyclers are set up in the old arena on the Canadian side, right? So it's a town building. So, I mean, I guess it just makes sense for us to um, to pay the liability insurance as they're in our property, right? So as an organization, they have to carry their own liability insurance? Yes. And that's what we're reimbursing oh, okay. them okay. for. The town, yes, has insured the building. Yeah. 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 So it just kind of covers all the bases, the liability and the building. Okay. Gotcha. Just liability. Because we... No, but we, we've got... There. Yes. Right. Just so right. if somebody with them was to yes. get hurt, then they're right. covered? So or you bring... So we've got the building covered. Yeah. And now yeah. through this assistance to them, the liability... Yeah. So if you were to bring yeah. your recycling and okay. were to get hurt, I'm, that's the liability okay. that we're covering. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. All right, next one, sir. Okay, the next one is a donation request from RCMP Chris Sheldwell. Sheldwell. The FAP committee recommends council approve a donation of $500 to the RCMP for project 529. Okay, it's been moved, uh, or sorry, yeah, it's been moved that the uh, FAP through Council Broomfield recommends uh, Council approve a donation of $500 to the RCMP for Project 529. Seconded by Councillor Duffett. Discussion? Can I ask what Project 529 is? Is that the bike uh, yes. thing? Okay. So, yeah, so uh, I guess just for everybody's information, uh, there's a local RCMP officer who's undertaking a project to uh, provide stickers and I guess bicycle safety, but uh, kids can have their information and then it's gonna be uploaded to a database. So if we find a bike or see a bike with this sticker, it can be returned. I think it kind of replaces years ago with the bike rodeo. They used to engrave them on the bottom. If, you know, if, if yeah, if everybody remembers what engraving is. <laughs> All right, so we're going a little bit modern. So good, uh, good one. So any other discussion? All right, uh, all those in favor of the donation of $500, indicate with aye. 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 Contraminded. Recommendation is approved, as passed. And your final recommendation, sir? This is not really the final Oh, okay. One. Nope. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got another one in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, code of conduct circular and templates for counselors and municipal officers. The FAP committee recommends that all of council understand that it is their responsibility to read the Municipality Act the Municipal Conduct Act and Municipal Conduct Regulations. There's no recommendation. Yeah, there's no recommendation. Nope. So maybe that one. It's an information uh, one. So I will urge uh, all the councillors to read the new Code of Conduct. It uh, deals with current councillors and former councillors and a lot more uh, um, discussion about conflicts of interest and stuff like that. So, All right, you have one more, sir? Yeah, there was one more <laughs> handed to me this, uh, just then before I started our meeting. Uh, MNL Municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador 2022 conference, which is going to be held in Gander this year. 
The FAP committee recommends Council send Mayor George Andrews and Council Hayward Broomfield to the MNL 2022 conference in November and that both be voting, voting delegates. So it's moved uh, by FAP through Council Broomfield to send myself, Mayor George Andrews, and Councillor Hayward Broomfield to the MNL 2022 uh, conference in Gander. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Country minded. Recommendations passed. Just a note, Mayor. Uh, the MNL only allows for two voting delegates, so a municipality can send how many people they want, but only two can be voting, and a motion of council is required for MNL to allow those voting okay. delegates. Okay. There we go. We'll get her closer to the mic. <laughs> so just in case uh, you didn't hear, uh, it is a requirement uh, that the uh, MNL conference send, is able to send two voting delegates and that it be by motion of council. And I guess that protects two people just saying, hey, we want to go without the rest of council knowing. So, all right. And that's the end of the Finance and, Min and Policy <laughs> Committee report. And now we're going to move to my good friend, Councillor Bennett and Municipal Services. Present, Councillor Denise Rumble, Councillor Todd Winters, Mayor George Andrews, CAO Nadine McCauley, Superintendent of Water and Sewer Keith Pye, Engineer Randy Dillon, Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy, and myself. The meeting was called to order at 4.33 p.m. Previous minutes and action items were reviewed, no errors or omissions. Manager's reports, Mr. Pye had a dual role on this one, this particular day, as there's nobody in that particular role uh, for roads and grounds right yet. Uh, crews were performing seasonal duties, <coughs> landfill signage and ditching is ongoing on, all the uh, normal stuff in that. Water and sewer report was attached. Wells one and one and seven working and testing continues, no issues, no issues at the reservoirs. COVID testing continues. Water and sewer services are ongoing. Engineers report was attached, deficiencies ongoing for the YMCA and completion schedules being monitored. Construction has started for the booster juice renovation in the Y. And RFP for lift station upgrades have been issued with the consultants. Town hall security upgrades have been completed with a few things left to be done. Discussion uh, about the heavy equipment fleet is ongoing and being reviewed. Um, the ad adjournment meeting was adjourned, sorry. <coughs> 6.07 p.m. Date of next meeting is scheduled for October the 5th, 4.30 p.m. And I have two recommendations, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bennett. So it's uh, moved that we accept the Municipal Services Committee report as presented by Councillor Bennett. Seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion? None heard. All those in favor of the report as presented indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded, report is accepted. Go ahead, which, whatever one you want to go first, whether it's the additional one or the. Two recommendations. Kay. First recommendation Integrated Pest Management Contract Award. The Municipal Services Committee recommends Council award a contract to Orkin Canada Corporation in the amount of $67,896 to look right. after the pest control for the buildings. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's been moved by uh, the Municipal Services Committee through Councilor Bennett that we award a contract to Orkin Canada for the amount $67,896. Seconded by Councilor Rumbold. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Wallace. Just to clarify, that's not 67896 annually. That's over three so years, three right? Three years, yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, okay. So should our motion be amended? Amend the motion 
So friendly amendment to that motion will be accepted if Councillor Bennett and yes, Councillor Bennett. So that's for three years. So if we could just um, note that. All right, so that amendment's done. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the contract award, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Okay, we've awarded a pest control contract. Your second recommendation, sir. Sir, number two, depot relocation. The Municipal Services Committee recommends council sign a lease agreement with CGI Holdings Incorporated in the amount of $43,624.10 for a term of five years. That's monthly. That's per, per month. month. That's monthly. <laughs> HST included. <laughs> okay. So it has been moved, Municipal Services, uh, that we uh, award a contract or a lease agreement, sorry, to CGI Holdings in the amount of $43,624.10, HST included per month for a term of five years. Uh, seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Uh, discussion. So, Councillor Brumfield. I had a couple items I'd like to point out on this one. I really believe this should be going into our budget not being approved here because 43000 per month, that's half a million dollars a year. A half, that's a new expense that we never had before as a council. A half million dollars is going to run us about a one and a half mil increase. I can tell you that now from my experience, which is not cheap. The other thing is the logistics is the very first driveway that our uh, snow clear is clear in the winter time and it's down here is the fire hall. We're asking to relocate people up to the Canadian side, which is going to take them a 15 minute ride to get up there in the morning in the dead of winter. And then it's going to take them even longer to come back with uh, heavy equipment that's got to be heated up and it's still more cold. I really think this belongs in the budget and not being approved right now. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody else want to discuss? Have, yep, Councillor Rumble. Um, Mayor, well, I, I definitely appreciate Councillor Broomfield's um, opinions. I think for me, the deciding factor is the health and safety side of things. The current depot that we have is not um, a usable space or will not continue to be a usable space for much longer. If we continue to stay where we are, we will still have expenditures because we will still have to pay for upgrades um, to the current space. We need to make sure that, um, you know, the air quality, number one, the safety, health and safety of our employees. Um, and I, I think it's a matter of weighing out, yes, it's a new expense and it's going to be an ongoing expense, but we're paying for something that will be done to suit our needs um, in a safe and usable um, operational efficiency standpoint. And yeah, I, I, I didn't, I gotta be honest, I didn't put a lot of thought into the, the proximity from Canadian side to the fire hall, but I have every faith that our um, staff will make sure that the priority areas are taken care of and that there won't be um, any risk to to that happening. I think that um, the whole town is only so far away. So if they make it a priority to get from Canadian side to to the fire hall, um, I'm sure that I have every confidence that it'll be taken care of. But I, I do understand the cost is a concern. I just think that when we weigh out the cost of something new and safe and efficient versus fixing up, it's kind of like, to me, it's like when I have my car and if I'm ready to trade in my car, I'm either going to be paying for repairs, 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 or I'm going to trade it in and get a new one. And um, that's the way I look at it personally. Thank you. Um, other discussion? Well, Pardon me? I yep. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Oh, I thought Sorry. you were telling me I missed something. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> no. uh, to speak to uh, Councillor Bloomfield's concern, uh, the superintendent uh, and I actually had this discussion last week. So with the, the timing, uh, the move wouldn't take place till summer so this winter we're same same as always the following winter what we've uh, discussed and agreed to do is keep one or two pieces of equipment at our current depot there's there is space for storage obviously still we're not getting rid of it 
and to keep one or two pieces there for those times when there's a major snow and you need to do that quicker thing to fire hall or <coughs> town hall or somewhere else that's more local to here and then everybody else would follow suit and go up to the uh, the north side location and spread out from there yeah. so that's how we address that issue with the difference in the yeah. uh, locations and i mean given the nature of snow clearing operations when it is on the go we're on the go so i uh, i kind of uh, echo what uh, Councilor Rumbold said. Uh, for me, it's about uh, that depot was how many years old now? Commissioned in 1987. So commissioned in 87. So, you know, it's considerably older. We've grown as a town. We have additional equipment. Our staff are working in, you know, uh, an, a, a building that needs to be upgraded in terms of uh, occupational health, safety, uh, clean air, that kind of stuff. Um, in some of the presentations I've been at uh, from a 3P perspective, which is public-private partnerships, I think it's important that we use that type of philosophy going forward because, um, you know, generally speaking, uh, if we were to build our own facility and amortize it over a number of years, um, we, uh, you know, governments in general aren't successful in coming in on budget on projects, so I mean it would cost us a, a lot of money uh, over the number of years that we have. So here we have a, an option uh, to enter into a you know, a great facility uh, built and tailored to our needs. Um, there are items, uh, budget perspective, absolutely. But at this stage, I mean, we uh, we really have to uh, we really have to look, you know, forward. I think in terms of uh, where we need to be and where we need to position a town. And you know, maybe is this something that we could do uh, in other uh, other areas? So, any other further discussion? Oh, sorry, one more, a couple yep. comments, huh? If you want to talk about the old, the oldest building we have that's still being used is the arena. And the air quality there, I suspect, is not that good, to be honest with you. That's my opinion on that one. But um, it is, this is going to start to cost us a lot of money. If we turn around and build, start to put our RFP to look at building our own and replacing whatever we got, over a period of time, I'd say over a 10 year period, we'd have it all paid off and built. Whereas this one here, this is gonna be an annual rent expense of a half a million dollars a year. And it's not cheap. Yep, fair. And uh, definitely looks say, I mean, in terms of uh, from budget consideration, that new type facility would be, uh, would be absolutely. I mean, we have experience with our why in terms of costs and what it should have cost us and what it did cost us. and design builds and that kinds of stuff. So, yep, no, absolutely, fully agree. Any further discussion? All right, so it's uh, moved and seconded that we uh, recommend signing a lease. So all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra-minded? Okay. So we have uh, four to two, or no, five to two, I guess. Uh, so it is, uh, is, it is approved. All right, that's it for you, sir. Thank you, Councillor uh, Bennett. Let's move to Protective Services. And uh, Councillor Duffett, the floor is yours. Thank you. Protective Services met on September 20th. In attendance was myself, Councillor Brumfield, Constable Baker, CAO Nadine McCauley, EA Kathy Eddy, um, and we did have a guest speaker that day as well, Chris Shellswell. Regrets were from Todd, uh, Councillor Todd Winters, Mayor Andrews, and um, Protective Services Director Brad Butler. We started with a presentation from Constable Shellswell, as was noted um, in the finance and admin. Uh, it did get handed over there afterwards. This was uh, regarding his community project, which was about <coughs> bicycle registration and anti, it was an anti-theft initiative, uh, which will assist in returning stolen bicycles. And we're all very excited to hear about this. The protective services reports um, that there was continuous projects on derelict properties. The enforcement department responded to 221 calls for service in August, uh, and there was discussions about the upcoming snow dumping season. We'd like to thank Constable Chris Shellswell for meeting with us, um, and we appreciate the RCMP's positive presence and enthusiasm for our community. The next meeting is scheduled for October 6 at 12 p.m. All right, it's been moved by Councillor Duffett. We accept the. Uh her report, her protective services report, as per uh, as presented, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, Winters. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor, 
indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Recommendations for our reporters have passed. So you don't have any recommendations for your committee? All right. Um, I just want to uh, take a, a couple of moments and uh, update um, the community, I guess, in terms of uh, the severe concerns that we've had uh, over public safety and the escalating activity uh, around and concerning public safety in our town. Um, everyone sitting around our table here and our, our staff's table are, are residents of the community. Uh, we see, we understand, we feel everything that's uh, going on. We hear uh, from concerned businesses, concerned residents. We read, uh, you know, social media posts and we feel the escalation. Um, we brought this uh, issue to the attention of the, uh, the province in a very critical light uh, and, and uh, a priority, I guess, in terms of expressing how uh, we were really concerned in the community about the public safety issue. Uh, about uh, activity that was happening and the escalation of activity. This first started uh, with meetings with the, uh, the Premier and uh, back in May, and then uh, Council of Delegates uh, and I met again with, uh, with the Premier the second time, short while later, with some uh, Cabinet Ministers. And uh, we've continually uh, brought the um, escalating concerns to the table uh, of the province and to those we reached out uh, for for help in uh, trying to uh, uh, deal with I guess some of the public safety concerns and uh, you know we uh, we hear it because we're here we're living it day to day we hear from many many individuals so last uh, and we've continued to uh, play a part in the acute response team which is the uh, group that um, was put together of, of cabinet ministers to deal with our uh, acute crisis in terms of public safety uh, we also continue to play uh, an active role in the action team, which is a team that's uh, been put in place. The mandate is to develop the long-term strategies and um, you know issues to help with the chronically homelessness and transient homelessness issues within our community. Um, we've continued to, uh, as a council, reiterate the escalating nature of uh, our concerns about public safety and what impact it's having on our community, our kids, our businesses, our day-to-day -day life, our uh, uh, assets, uh, our staff, uh, in terms of uh, you know, dealing with, uh, with, the, with the activity and with the concern for public safety. Last Friday, or sorry, last Thursday, I uh, participated in a uh, acute response team meeting. And um, it wasn't, um, during that meeting, I was very, uh, very concerned, very upset and uh, reiterated that uh, we just can't continue as a community to allow and to uh, uh, you know, stand by while this escalating uh, activity and, and you know, the concerns around the public safety. Um, the message was very clearly understood um, and supported by, uh, by the folks around that table. Uh, to that end, uh, we have received assurance um, through uh, the province and through, uh, through the acute response team members that um, things will be addressed and without getting too much into uh, the operational details because I haven't been shared too much of the operational details but we have been reassured that um, we will see uh, additional RCMP officers for a period of time uh, to assist with enhancing uh, and trying to deal with some of the public safety items um, and uh, reassuring uh, the public and trying to deal with, with those issues that are of all concern to us and what we've seen. Um, we've continuously been meetings, uh, countless meetings, as a council, uh, being proactive in trying to bring the messaging through. And uh, on, like I say, last Thursday, we were successful and the outreach from the province was, uh, was uh, put in place. Uh, our understanding is that in very short order, and I'm hoping it's shorter than, you know, uh, weeks and weeks kind of deal, I'm, I'm expecting days, that we will see this uh, increased presence and uh, increased ability to, uh, to address um, the public safety concerns. So that's what we have been doing, and as per our social media policy of our town, we haven't been uh, advertising Facebook-wise, um, but really from our last update to this past Thursday or Friday, there, uh, you know, we continuously have, have requested uh, help and assistance, and uh, I'm hoping that the message that I got on Friday uh, back 
was uh, an engagement of uh, um, this uh, that I just mentioned in terms of increase in uh, policing patrols uh, by additional members for, uh, for a period of time will go a very long way in uh, addressing some of those public safety concerns. The issues around uh, transient and homelessness and homelessness issue in our town is a, an issue that we continue to work with with and through the action team and that will be something that won't, uh, you know, won't see a resolution tomorrow, but uh, they're continuing to work on it. So uh, we, uh, we put our, uh, our hope in that, and uh, from a public safety perspective, I think it goes a long way in terms of addressing uh, our critical, critical, critical need right now. All right. Um, let's move into approval of checks. Councillor Broomfield. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, for the month of uh, August 24th to September the 20th, Town, Town Council Happy Valley Goods Pay recommends we approve checks totaling $1,025,093.35. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor uh, Broomfield that we accept the checks in order of. Uh, one million, where were two, sorry. One million, twenty-five thousand, ninety-three dollars and thirty-five cents. Uh, seconder, please. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? I have just one question. Yep. Is the architecture 49, um, well, Randy's not here, so we can't, can't answer that. Yep. Uh, I, I just think that architecture 49 um, from my understanding, dealing with the deficiency SAP day at the Y, and that money was supposed to be held back because of that. Dealing with what? The deficiencies at the Y. Yeah, oh. deficiencies at the Y. Okay, um, I also uh, reiterate uh, Councillor uh, Winters' concerns, along with the, uh, the check being issued to the consultant that uh, oversaw the program here uh, with our recent security uh, things and where we are in that regard. So, um, I would like to get personally some more updated information from um, our director of engineering, and he's out of town. So, is it possible um, that we hold those two particular checks? So, it's in check number 25304, and uh, second, oh, where's the two? Uh, check number 25266 for Lat 49 architecture. Because these address uh, these issues at the Y, the hundred deficiencies that remain on the list have to be addressed before, and I don't think we, uh, you know, we should be paying. We should look at the details in terms of that if we could. Lot forty nine is not the ones here. No, nope, it's this here though. It's the issue that was here, right? Lot forty nine. The greens construction. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So the project that's here because it's still not completed. So, okay. all right. So is that. Uh, Acceptable? Can we? What's that? Would you be willing to hold those two checks from that? Oh yes. Okay. Yep. So instead of the doing the math, we uh, will do the motion, but uh, holding the two checks for Architecture 49 and Lab 49. Is that good? Yep. Second there. Mm -hmm. All right. You good with that second? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right. So any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contraminded. Okay, motion's passed. All right, folks, call your counselor's form. I'm going to look around and I'm gonna to go to Councillor Duffett first. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to let everyone know that this will be my last meeting as a member of the 13th Council for the Town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. Um, I will be resigning in the coming days. I've had some changes in my personal life recently, um, which has led me to, I will be moving in, a, in recent weeks. Um, and I feel the need to share that little bit of detail simply because I would like to let the community know that I'm leaving this role on a positive note. Um, I'm immensely proud to have been elected and I care about this. <laughs> um, I care about this town very deeply and all of the people who reside here, anybody who has any sort of connection to here. Um, my time on council has been surrounded by so many hardworking people and a minute. <laughs> um, I have the utmost respect for everyone that I've had the pleasure to learn from and work with, as well as, thanks, <laughs> respect for all the community members. 
Um, I leave on a very positive and, even though I'm almost crying, a uh, positive and confident note, as there could not be a better group of people to represent this town. <laughs> and the amount of time, effort, heart, and soul that happens behind closed doors is unimaginable. And I hope whoever fills my seat does so by continuing to bring the kindness and respect that I hope I brought. And I want to thank everybody very much for trusting me over this last year. I'm done. <laughs> well. Count me out now. <laughs> where do we go from there? Uh, Councillor Duffett, um, I'll just say that uh, I remember the first time I met you, you were a little girl uh, at piano class because I had to attend my, with my daughter. Um, when you first came on council um, and we, we had chats and uh, saw you, uh, you know, the way you conduct yourself and the way you put your heart and soul into, into uh, protective services and to the rest of the role of Canada, our uh, council, and you always bought that social conscience kind of deal, which, uh, which is uh, greatly appreciated from my perspective, and I'm, I'll let others speak, but um, I wish you nothing but the best, and uh, it's disappointing to see but uh, I'm sure there'll be openings in St. John's or Mount Pearl or wherever you're going, because I, I, I have no doubt that you'll continue in this sort of role um, for, uh, for the foreseeable future or in the future when things uh, balance for you. So from my perspective, thank you for your engagement. And thank you for, uh, for just being there. So I wish you nothing but the best. Who wants to now go who's next? next yeah. <laughs> who wants to go next? <laughs> I'll go to Councillor Bennett down at the end there. Last time that I was fortunate enough to get elected in council was 24 years ago. <laughs> 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 and you were just being born. Yeah. <laughs> it's good times. Yeah. Good times, yeah. So, you know, it's been a pleasure, you know, and uh, I learned a little bit about food from you over the last year. And, uh, and uh, it's all good. So I wish you all the best in, uh, in your endeavors, and I'm sure you'll do well wherever you go. Thank you. And take care of yourself. Anything else, sir? Uh, I know, it's just... Councillor uh, Winters. I got three things, okay. just to lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say congratulations to the Mealy Mountain soccer team setting to provincials after winning the regionals in Lab West last weekend. And a uh, big shout out to my little buddy, Carl Crawford, for being named MVT, MVP. Um, he's come a long way. I coached Carl when he was nine years old, and to see him become the player he's, he has is... Uh, Tremendous um, effort on his part and the coaches that brought him up throughout the years. Uh, the second thing is the Happy Valley Day plans are in place for Sunday, October 2nd. We hope to see a good turnout. And third is Councillor Dovett. Uh, thank you for your time on Council. Thanks for your hard work and wish you all the best in the future. Your passion and your commitment is second to none. And just hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Save you for second last. Uh, <laughs> did you want to go now? Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Wallace. Always. I'll okay. shake it up tonight. I'm before you. <laughs> uh, same again, Councillor Winters. I'm sending a huge congratulations to the male and female soccer teams of Mealy Mountain Collegiate. Both uh, teams won first place at regionals against our ri rivals, Labrador City. Go Hawks, go. And uh, to represent Labrador at the Provincials is wonderful. So it's, a, it's great. We're glad to be there. The caliber of these players is outstanding, and the dedication uh, to training and preparation by coaches and players is admired. So we wish them all the best. We have one primary school, one middle school, one high school, and one Ecole Francaise in, in the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. Talking about our youth, our children and youth need this, our support more than ever. Our children have witnessed quite a lot over this last summer and the last few years, particularly since moving back to my hometown. Many illicit and illegal activities. Our children have witnessed assaults, indecent exposure. They have been harassed by intoxicated individuals. This has occurred whilst playing sports at school during the middle of class, as well as walking to and from school during lunch on the way to and from school in the morning, eight in the morning or afternoon. The safety of our children and youth and the entire population has been removed from us all. We as a council have met with the provincial government leaders to ask for their assistance to help. 
The resources of our town are well out of range of scope to address this situation where we find ourselves as residents, all residents living in. As a resident of the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay, our community, we must protect all children and all residents. We have the right to absolutely, or sorry, we have the absolute right to feel safe in our entire community. I look forward to seeing some proactive measures coming from the provincial government to address these issues. Lastly, I would like to send our love and heartfelt condolences to those who have lost a loved one and some their entire home and belongings as a result of Hurricane Fiona in uh, the Port of Basque region. 80 homes have been damaged, no repair, and completely lost. The impact this puts on the communities of Port of Basque, Virgil, Ramia, and surrounding areas, of course, of these areas is mammoth. Dramatically affected affordable housing, which was worse then is now more uh, worse off than ever as 19 of these homes were lost. We wish you all strength and courage to guide you through these difficult times. Councillor Duffett, I won't even try <laughs> to do that here. We'll do it at dinner, don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you, I'm done. Thank you. Which one? Now let's go. Let's go with Councillor Rumbold. She's looking like she's... <laughs> Oh my goodness, okay. Um, uh, I echo a lot of what everybody else has said, especially Deputy Mayor Wallace. Um, we are all having thoughts and prayers with those that were affected by uh, Hurricane Fiona. And um, it kind of makes you um, proud as a Newfoundland and Labradorian <coughs> to see the way communities come together and um, we count our blessings that you know we we weren't affected we aren't affected um and but you never know we've done some training as counselors in emergency preparedness and so i sit and i watch the news with different eyes now because we know um how what happens to one member of a community happens to the entire community and and so again to what the mayor touched on and what deputy mayor wallace said um we do feel everything that our neighbors and our friends feel. Um, we have a public safety issue. Thank goodness, we're like I said, we're not suffering from something like a, a hurricane, a flood. Um, but we need to look out for one another. We need to have eyes on each other. Um, I went for a walk last night and a neighbor messaged me to make sure I got home safely. So um, just be cognizant of your surroundings, especially the children, as Deputy Mayor Wallace has said. Um, look out for each other, look out for the children. Um, we are very pleased to have additional support, as the mayor said, from the RCMP um, on the horizon, but we all have to do our own parts. Uh, council was um, privileged to have some time today to meet with some of the new RCMP cadets and they are um, a welcome addition to our community because they have plans, each one of them touched on plans that they have as part of their new RCMP projects to um, help and assist in our community with um, youth initiatives. And like we've, we've got an RCMP member who spearheaded that bike initiative and, and we've got other things um, that will come out from those um, members. So we're very grateful for that. Um, Fire Prevention Week is October the 9th to the 15th, and some of the members of our Happy Valley Goose Bay Volunteer Fire Department have already been in the schools and doing presentations to the kids. So um, that's something else that I'd like to tip my hat to them for um, putting that time in. And I don't want to talk about Councillor Duffett, <laughs> so um, I left her for last because I have been so proud to sit at this table with her and watch her conduct herself in such a professional and caring way. Um, she is a younger counselor, as uh, Councillor Bennett said. <laughs> He's been around a little bit longer, but her viewpoint, her what she's brought to the table has been enlightening, I think, for all of us and she will be missed terribly. Um, we also, I guess now is the time, as much as I hate to say it, now is the time 
for anybody who's thinking about, you know, putting their, throwing their hat in the ring, um, you got some big shoes to fill, and they've got real high heels yeah. on them <laughs> sometimes. But uh, anybody who is um, thinking about it, now's the time to put that thought in because um, we need uh, to work hard together as a group of seven, and missing that one body is going to be huge. And uh, so we look forward to, to seeing um, members of the community that are interested in uh, you know, working with us for a better community, um, and we'll we'll welcome whoever comes, but we'll terribly miss you, Councillor Duffet. That's it for me. <laughs> <sighs> Councillor, <laughs> last but not least, okay, go ahead. I'll sir. keep it short. Then. No, no. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to uh, wish Councillor Duffet all the best in her future, wherever she goes, whatever she does. You know, she goes back to school. You're never too old. I was 32 <laughs> years old when I went back to university, so you never know what's in store for you in the future. I wish you all the best. Uh, hats off to anybody who offers themselves to any public office, municipal, provincial, or federal, right? Or Aboriginal, for that matter. Because you are doing a public service, and you are throwing yourself out there, and you open yourself to criticism to everybody, but that's a part of the realities, too. But we're all good, and I think we can all handle it. And like I said, I wish you the best, right? So we basically, we're one year now to our four-year term. We've one year under our belt. Um, we've got a lot done. We've got a lot learned, and we still got a lot to learn because nobody knows what the future holds. And I hope for us that it's good things, but we also have to be prepared for the worst, too, as well, right? And in that, I'm talking really about emergency preparedness after you see what happened in Port of Bass. And my heart does go out to all the people of Port of Bass on that one, because right now we have a lot of people who have left us since we've been here in a short year, and a good many of them were trained to for this kind of emergency. So we do have to get a full slate of people on our staff and well-trained for everything of this kind of nature. And on that, I'll leave it at that and wish everyone all the best. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, just a couple of things. And, and uh, I have to apologize because uh, I wanted to start this meeting uh, on a, on a, uh, a note. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, recognize uh, when we hear of the passing of a former councillor or for a former mayor or staff member for that matter, I'd like to, uh, for us to make notice of that uh, at the beginning of our meetings. We do, do put out a PSA. But uh, a lot of people have spent a lot of time in this building, and uh, I'd just like to uh, make mention of uh, former Councillor Dennis Conway. Uh, he's had a huge impact on people in our town from uh, his time as a, as a councillor, I guess, and, and <coughs> councillor in both, both spellings, both as a town councillor and as a human science councillor as well. So I'd just like to read this, uh, what we put out on our, uh, our public uh, uh, webpage. So, Town of Happy Valley Goose Bay is sad and to have learned the passing of former resident and town councillor Dennis Conway. Dennis Conway was elected as a councillor in 1969 to the third council, town council of Happy Valley Goose Bay prior to amalgamation. In 1985, he was elected to the fourth council and he was elected once again in 1989 to the fifth council. He was a respected member of the community and known by many and we just passed our, uh, pass on our, our condolences. I've already reached out to his family and passed on him. He also served on the combined councils of Labrador and uh, was a firefighter within our fire hall and uh, another firefighter within uh, entities of the, uh, the base and stuff and, you know, back in the public work days and Transport Canada days. And his name sits on the wall over here several times. So I'd just like to do that and I'd like to make sure that we do that in the future. It's just not a simple PSA to, uh, to do it. Um, Fiona, yes, I, I can't bring anything else to Fiona. Uh, the uh, other than uh, to kind of reiterate what Councillor uh, Brumfield was saying, in terms of our planning, we need to take to into consideration some of what we're going to be doing in the future from an infrastructure infrastructure perspective to uh, to ensure that we're uh, we're prepared. Uh, climate change is happening, and it's not getting any uh, less frequent or less uh, less severe. One of the things uh, we had over this past little while was an excellent visit from our namesake ship, the HMCS Goose Bay. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Daniel Royce and his crew were absolutely uh, phenomenal. Um, a lot of the activities that we had uh, worked to plan around had to be curtailed uh, somewhat because of the passing of Her Majesty. And uh, 
the military's restriction in terms of what they were allowed to do and what they weren't allowed to do. So that got curtailed, I would say, probably by two-thirds. But one of the exciting things was that uh, we had the opportunity, or 200 or more folks from our community had the opportunity to tour the uh, Goose Bay. And the weather was uh, miserable that day, but 200 folks went down. Uh, we were down to a, uh, a reception on board, and if we had a dollar for every car that came down on the dock that night, we would have been able to make a donation, very uh, large donation to somebody. So they made it through Fiona and are headed back to, uh, to Halifax. I watched his updates on Twitter and uh, they managed to make it to Halifax before one hit and then they're on their way back. So we wish them all uh, the best. We do have a couple of artifacts from the ship that we're going to mount in here and I'm just awaiting, uh, I'll bring them down, they're still uh, in my car, so I'll bring them in, but he's going to do a write-up, and uh, we'll actually put him probably by the ship's bell or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't need to mention anything. We've got incredible folks and kids in our community that uh, uh, dedicate a lot of time and effort into sports, and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's pretty incredible that, uh, you know, our kids can uh, go and compete and come back with, uh, you know, regional titles and hopefully go on to provincial titles, and that, uh, you know, or across a wide spectrum of sports, so that's good. We have seen an update for the vendor's permit uh, process in town. If you happen to be a vendor or someone who uh, sells items, there is a little procedure that uh, you can follow on an application. So we're, uh, we're looking uh, forward to that. Um, as well, just a quick update on the audit. And I thought our good friend would uh, bring it up, but uh, we're proceeding very good. So we soon uh, will be in a position where the 2019 audit will be completed. So we'll be well underway. Um, so with that, like I say, uh, just to reiterate, you know, we're all in this community together. We all see what's happening. I would urge folks that if you see things going on, call the RCMP. Call the RCMP with the information and the details. And um, uh, some of the calls uh, to our enforcement line are routed through to the RCMP as well. So if our municipal enforcement officer is not on, and I will send a huge shout out to him for his activities around town as well. But if he's not on uh, or he's away, the calls get rooted. But uh, please report the AI reports. Don't post them on Facebook without reporting them, please, to, to the RCMP. We need to get that uh, information to where it needs to, be, uh, needs to be done. Outside of that, I am entertaining. I've already said my piece about Councillor Mary. Information, I guess, on uh, by-election will be forthcoming in the upcoming days when uh, and if... Uh, I'll say if with a hope that uh, <laughs> the resignation uh, is delivered to myself or uh, uh, the uh, CAO in, uh, in writing to formalize it. Uh, so yeah, information will be coming and we'll put it to the regular sources. Uh, outside of that, I will entertain anybody else. Do you have anything to bring to the meeting? Do you have anything to bring to the meeting? I would like to thank you for your efforts in terms of the Goose Bay and stuff. And uh, the efforts today for the uh, reception with the cadets was great too, so I appreciate that. Don't forget, Happy Valley Day is on Sunday. Yep, Sunday, and I'm, I've offered to be uh, a pie-tasting uh, judge because there is a pie contest. You have to pr produce two pies, I think, and it'll be good practice because I think there's going to be another one for our 50th celebrations next year. So uh, let's, uh, let's make it good, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing everybody Friday, maybe, if any of you want to drop down to, the, to our proclamation and the raising of the flag, and... Uh, next on Sunday. All right, Phew. anything else from anybody? Uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Motion's adjourned, uh, meeting's adjourned.